Hello developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to build a simple CRUD application using Spring Boot 3 and Vue 3. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that we published back in August of 2022 but you can see it was just updated here in January of 2023. And so if you want to know all the nitty gritty details on how to integrate the two and what each little part is in very in-depth explanation, I invite you to read the blog post. But today we're just here to actually show you how all the code works. And so if you click on code there and go to the GitHub repo, I have a demo.adoc file in here. So this is ASCII doc. That's what adoc stands for. And if I click on the raw version, I can see it with my handy dandy ASCII doctor plug in there and it looks nice and pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the left there and then I'll open up a terminal on the right. Put that more on the left there, there we go. And so you'll see there's a few prerequisites, but first of all, the gist of what I'm going to be doing today is creating a Spring Boot 3 backend, a Vue 3 frontend, and then integrating them together with OpenID Connect and OAuth 2.0. And so we'll use the Quasar framework for the Vue frontend and then the back end is just going to use Spring Security's OAuth resource server support. So you'll need Java 17 to begin. Let me see if I'm using that. Yep, Java 17. And then the Auth0 CLI. I have that installed. And if you don't have the Auth0 CLI installed, you can go to its GitHub repo here. And you'll see it there. And it has installation instructions right there. Yep, so you can use Homebrew if you like, and uh, and all kinds of other things. So that's pretty nice there. Put that back on the left. And you'll also need HTTP IE. So I have that installed, 321, and Node 16 and above. Yep, and the Vue CLI. All right, so it looks good. We got all those installed. And then while I'm going through each one of these steps, you might notice that there's some brackets at the end. And every so often, I'll just type a few characters and spit out a bunch of code. Those are IntelliJ Live templates. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you want the demo script, the GitHub repo, the blog post, all of them are in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. Click on them, and you can get more in-depth information there. But my IntelliJ Live templates are at mrabel idea live templates and you could see I just updated them 26 minutes ago and so it shows you how to import them and you can use them as well it's a really nifty feature of IntelliJ so that's why I use them there and of course if you just want to fast track it you know clone the repo from github and read what's in the readme in order to get started there's an octa branch which is the main branch and then an auth0 branch this is all in the readme and each one contains separate instructions on whether you want to set it up on octa or auth0 and today I'm just going to show Auth0. Why? Because it's easier and better, in my opinion. Uh, first, we're going to create a Spring Boot View CRUD directory. So I like to do this in my downloads directory, make sure nothing's in there, clear it out, and then uh, take Spring Boot View CRUD. And if you don't have the take command installed, you can do make dir and cd into it. And then I'm going to create an Auth0 OIDC application. So Auth0 apps create. Uh, we're going to name it View Spring Boot. And description isn't necessary. We're going to make a single page web application. And then for the callback URL, we're going to use HTTP localhost 8080. And then copy that because you're going to need it for the next values as well. And once that's created, we have the basic information that we're going to need to do OAuth and OpenID Connect with Auth0. So I'm going to open up a new terminal down here. We'll put that on the right, just because some of these values are right there. So we're going to create a .env file just in our main directory here and put some values into it. So that client ID we're going to need, grab that from over here. And then the auth0 domain, that is right up here. And that's good enough for now. You can exit out of that one. And then we'll create a test Auth0 API. So this is what we can use to validate our JWT tokens against. So Auth0 APIs, create 
dash n my API dash dash identifier, and we'll give an identifier with HTTP there. So you can just accept the defaults of no scopes, uh, regular default token lifetime, and no offline access for this particular example. And now the next thing is to bootstrap a Spring Boot app using Spring Initializer. So you can do that with curl, and we're gonna hit start.spring.io. We're gonna use Spring Boot version 3.0.2, which is the latest as of today, and Java version 17, which is required for Spring Boot 3. And then our dependencies are gonna be Spring MVC, uh, Spring Data REST, Lombok to make just our model classes a little tighter, uh, Spring Data JPA, H2 for in-memory persistence, and an OAuth 2 resource server. And we're going to use Gradle. And we're gonna put that on a resource server directory, and then we can start it up right now if we want, but there's not going to be a whole lot going on. So if we were to open up, you know, localhost 8080, you'll see it's just configured with Spring Security's default configuration, and that's because we haven't configured anything. So if you were to use user and that password, it could sign in and it would just show you the Spring Data REST default endpoint. So that's all working, and now we can create a Spring Security configuration class to configure Spring Security so it doesn't give us this default you know, user authentication. So open that up in IntelliJ, and we'll start by creating a Spring Security configuration class in just the default demo package, security configuration. And again, this is where my live templates come into play. SBV is the one I use for this one. And it's just gonna create a security configuration class. And you can see it defines a filter, security filter chain bean, and it's going to authorize HTTP requests and basically allow any request. And then we're gonna replace the demo application with some initialization information. So this does is a few different things. First of all, it's got a to-do repository, which we'll create in a minute that basically initializes and adds some data in there. So you can see there's a stream of to-dos here, buy milk, eat pizza, update tutorial, study view and go kayaking. And then a filter registration bean, which basically allows cores to work between the front end with view and the back end in Spring Boot. So it's just allowing anything from localhost 8080. And then down here, there's rest repository configurator basically takes the to-do class and exposes the IDs to it so the view client can easily do CRUD on it. it. makes it a little easier to do the whole CRUD stuff. So that's why we have that there. And so the next thing we'll do is create that to-do model class. And you can see this is using Lombok. So it's got Jakarta imports for the ID generated value and entity. Those are from Spring. Uh, JPA, not from Spring Data JPA, but just JPA in general. And then because we're using Lombok, you do have to have a Lombok plugin installed. So if I were to go to, you know, plugins here in IntelliJ and look at my plugins, I can see that Lombok is installed. And so if you're using an ID that's not IntelliJ, um, you'll have to, you know, Google for Lombok, you know, Eclipse or whatnot. Um, if you are using IntelliJ, you will need to install it. But all the commands I'm going to use in this tutorial, I never start it from IntelliJ. So it should work if you don't have the plugin installed, as long as you run the Gradle commands instead of, you know, starting it up here with your IDE. So now we need that to-do repository interface. Remember, this is an interface, not a class. So to-do repository and select interface. And then we can do extends and uh, not that one, uh, JPA repository and to do and long, and then we'll put an annotation on it. So it exposes this repository as a rest endpoint. This is nice for demos, maybe not great in production, but it works pretty well for this. So repository rest resource, and now this can do basically CRUD, you know, on that to do entity. And so now we can fire up our, uh, Backend app, Gradle W, boot run. And you can go ahead and hit it with the uh, HTTP IE. So 9000 slash two dos. Oh, we're still in 8080. We haven't changed it to 9000 yet. So 8080 
and you can see we're getting all those values that we entered in there back so that looks good and now we'll secure it so it's not secure right we used HTTPIE to connect to it and didn't prompt us for anything so edit this security configuration and we're gonna change any request to any request authenticated and then we're also gonna make it a resource server so that's gonna be dot and OF2 resource server there and then we want to use JWT authentication so you can also use opaque uh, access tokens there is a uh, nomenclature in the OAuth 2 spec where access tokens don't have to be JWTs they can just be a random string the cool thing about a JWT is it's also just a random string of characters so this will allow us to use JWT to authenticate and then to make things a bit more secure we'll add a JWT decoder bean that does audience validation So you'll see this takes a couple values in for the OAuth audience or the Auth0 audience and then the issuer and then it does some work here to validate that. So we've got to do some imports and value import as well. And then this audience validator we do have to create. And what this does is just takes in that audience and verifies it matches from the JWT what we have actually coded into our configuration. And so the configuration is in application.properties and we'll go ahead and add server port. We're gonna make that 9,000 and that's so it doesn't conflict with the view application which runs on 8080 by default. And then that auth0 audience which is HTTP my dash API. And then uh, issuer so spring security and uh, we'll do that your auth zero domain so the cool thing is i have a github copilot enabled so it actually completed a lot of that for me but it doesn't match what i need it to match so um auth zero i think it's a tenant list tenants so we're using uh, i believe this one here i didn't know i had so many tenants that's awkward uh, maybe better to look in that uh, env file we created right so grab this one right here and this is the issuer you do need that trailing slash so uh, that's something that comes uh, issuer is a standard part of OpenID connect and this allows you to do discovery on what the token endpoints are what the uh, keys are and all that kind of stuff so we would actually open that in the browser and put that slash in there and do well known open ID configuration you can see all those endpoints right so when you give an issuer to spring security that has an endpoint like this it will automatically append the dot well known slash open ID configuration on it and give you all the information about that issuer and so now we can start up that server again. It's still going, so control C, restart it. And then if we try to hit it with 9,000 to-dos because we changed the server port, you'll see now we get a 401 access denied. So now let's create the view client that can talk to that backend with an access token and make it all work. So we're gonna start by, I'll close this one out and go to the main directory there and scroll our instructions up so we can see them a little easier. So we'll do clear it, view, create client. That's just the name of the project we're gonna create. And it'll prompt you for the defaults. I'm gonna do view three, Babel and ESLint. And then you can CD into that created directory and do view add Quasar or the Quasar framework. So this prompts you if you want to replace a bunch of files, just accept all the defaults, um, SAS, material icons, and ENUS. And then we'll need to add some additional dependencies for HTTP requests, logging, routing, and authentication. So MPMI, Axios, and view three logger, view router, and Auth0's view SDK. So we created that uh, .env file earlier. We'll move that from the root directory 
into this client directory just to look at it again it's got a client id right that we registered that oadc app on auth0 with the auth0 domain the audience that we created and then the server's url for its api and so i'll open this up in intellij and i'll open up the uh, parent directory of both projects go ahead and load that gradle script and then in the client we're going to replace the main.js it's just pretty simple right now. You can see it there. And we have a few more options just for the logging and all that. And we're creating the app with the Quasar options, the view logger, the router, and Auth0. So the Auth0 contains a few settings for the domain, the client, and the authorization parameters for the redirect URI and the audience. And we're getting all that from that .env file. And then we're creating our API that we can talk to as a global property and then we'll create an app.view which already exists we're just going to replace it our code and you'll see up here at the top it's just got some you know quasar header toolbar and then uh, if we're authenticated or not it'll show a login or log out button and then the router view is right here and then at the bottom it's using auth0 to set up the things that will be used right is authenticated login with redirect log out all that kind of stuff and then the user and their authentication status and then we can replace or create a new api class in the source api don't ask again and this class is just what's used to talk to our back end using an interceptor to grab that access token from the auth0 view sdk set it as an authorization header and then everything else is just you know ways of creating new getting all updating for an id and removing for an id right so it's it's basically doing what's needed to do to send that data to the back end as well as get it back to do the create read update and delete and so now we can create a router in source router index This is pretty simple. It's just got the main path to the home component, which we need to create, and then to do's component, which we need to create as well. And that requires auth, right? That's not something that, you know, is there by default. So um, this will make it because we configured view to be the SDK uh, or the auth0 SDK for view, and we set up that plugin. That's why this requires auth will work. And so now we can create a home component home.view and to look at the export default settings down here you have that router it's using and basically if you click on login it'll log in with redirect and if you log out it'll return back to where you started and then if you click on to do it'll go to that to do so up here there's just a you know simple page that says you're either logged in or logged out and you can log in or log out and then if we go to create a to-do item, first of all, we can delete this whole world since it's not used anymore. Create a to-do item component. And this has got a little more meat to it. Uh, there's an item section up here which shows, uh, basically it creates a, uh, a grid where it's like, is the uh, to-do completed? And then you can add new to-dos and you can edit to-dos and all that kind of stuff. And when you click on the certain section, it either allows you to edit it or delete it. And then down here, it's a to-do item for the component name. And then all these props to enable, deleting, showing, setting completed, setting title. The data is basically returned there. And then handling, you know, the clicks, the cancels, the dones, the set completed is all done in this view code. And you can see the API is what's calling that update for ID and basically communicating with the back end. And then we have some styles down at the bottom. And the last one, the biggest one, is the to-dos component. This one's a little bit longer, at almost 200 lines of code, but this is uh, this is basically the you know grid screen. So before I talked about the to-do item had the ability to you know handle itself and manage its data, this is grouping all those to-do items right here together into this main component 
that allows you to do all the different things that you can do with a to-do. And then, you know, here's the section where you can add a new to-do item, the input for doing that, you know, allowing you to just hit enter to save it. And then this whole section here, which allows you to filter various uh, to-dos. So you can see the completed ones, the incompleted ones. And then down here at the bottom, it's got the data, right? Cause it starts with none. And then when it sets up, it basically grabs them all right from the API and loads them. So you can say loading is false and here's all the to-dos. And then this allows you to filter them. And then the methods for setting the filter, clicking delete, uh, marking them as completed, you know, talking to that API to remove them or to remove them, you know, locally, remove from the API, remove locally, and then handle, you know, that you've created a new to-do and setting all that up. So a lot of methods in there, but you know, that's how it all works, right? Takes a little bit of code. The Spring Boot side is super easy to do CRUD, but with the view side, you do have to write code to do it. So that's the nature of HTML and JavaScript. But the cool thing is now it should all work. So uh, first of all, let's uh, start up the back end. We'll need to go into that resource server directory. So Gradle W boot run. And then the front end, CD into client and npm run serve. That starts up on localhost 8080. Make that a little bigger. Login takes us to Auth0. And so if you don't have an account, you'll want to sign up. If you create a new user in your Auth0 tenant just for this demo, make sure and activate it via email or via the admin console because it's not activated by default and that'll give you all kinds of weird errors. So I have my credentials in one password here. So mrabel at gmail. I log in, it prompts me to authorize. And now I'm logged in. And I can go to that to-do app and see that, you know, we might need to add something else. So learn more about Auth0, for instance, and it communicates to the back end. That's all set up. If you want to study view, you could change that to, you know, view three and toggle off and it updates. And you could even like, you know, say, hey, we've, uh, we've completed that one. And then you'll see the ones that are complete and incomplete. And if you refresh, it doesn't maintain those filters, but you can see it marked that tutorial as updated. So everything's, you know, communicating with the back end and all that's working as expected. So the next thing is to just test your back end as a resource server, since we did create that API in Auth0 and it does allow us to easily create access tokens to test it. So you can do Auth0 test token dash A for the audience. And that's HTTP my dash API. And so it'll prompt you to open a browser window. Oh, you gotta actually say yes. Opens a browser window and login successful. And then you can grab that token and use it accordingly. So set it as a environment variable. And then you can do verify that it requires an access token, right? That's HTTP to do's on port 9000 gives us that 401 and then we can make that a bit bigger and do it with an authorization header. And now we get all that information back. So that's all working and you can see it even added that new one that we put in there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this quick screencast on creating a Spring Boot 3 API with Java 17 and a front end using Vue 3. You can find all the code on GitHub and there's a link to the blog post if you'd rather read that and peruse that again. But also notice down here, if you'd like to use Auth0, this is showing Okta. So if you've used Okta before, this is a great read, I think, that shows you here's how to do it with Okta, but then here's how to do it with Auth0. So you could even compare the branches, right? If you went up here and did compare, it would prompt you which one. So main is Okta. And then Auth0 here, and you can see all the code that's basically different between them. You don't really care about the README there, but you know, there's a few different environment variables, a few different dependencies, and the view code looks a bit different. So if you like this screencast, follow me on Twitter for many more. I like to post good ones and share others that are related to OpenID Connect and Auth0. Follow my team on Twitter at Octodev, and of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one and just good knowledge about identity and code.
Have a great day.